there's so many emotions. I mean, I'm excited, you know, a little bit nervous, um, but I feel that, you know, it's been so many years and this, this fight is such a long time coming. I'm just, I'm almost just like that feeling of finally, like it's, it's here. Was there ever a time along the way that you thought, like, I don't, they're never going to let me get back there, no matter how many wins I have? Because it, it kept seeming like as the wins added up, they'd still find another person to put in there, another reason to do a rematch or what have you. I, 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 would, I like, didn't know what to think. You know, I was, I was hoping. I knew I was in talks of it um, early on because I was even like put in as a last-minute replacement to fight Whaley like back then. So I knew I was in their head of, you know, just right along those brinks, but. Um, you know, you keep fighting, you keep winning, like they can only um, hold it from you for so long. So I knew it was just a matter of time, like whatever I had to do to, to solidify that place, I was going to do it. Did you ever hear, I know she did it, it was like, well, Carla's great, she's not as marketable. These, are, these two, these are a little bit more marketable, a little more personable. When you hear stuff like that as an athlete, it's kind of the reality of the sport, right? But is it, is it a little bit frustrating to hear that? And does it make you think of changing your approach to things? For me, it's all about being genuine and being myself. And some people kind of have that star quality, or you know, they're more outgoing or more outspoken. Um, but I think the sport um, is great um, in a way that it does need its, you know, its trash talkers, this and that. But I think it's good to have, you know, that balance and that combination of people who are maybe like a little bit more humble or quiet. And I really um, feel good about getting this far in the sport and just being totally genuinely myself. You mentioned how many years it's been. It's crazy how long it's been. I mean, can you compare yourself then as, as a person, as a fighter? I mean, are, is, are you still the same, or do you feel like just entirely different at this point? I think anybody with, you know, almost eight years down the line of um, since I won the title, like, I think anyone is going to change a lot. And I don't think you could be in the sport for that long without having a lot of evolution in your game. Um, you know, and as a person, I mean, just so many life changes in your 20s and your 30s, I definitely feel different, um, but it, it, it's almost a good feeling. I feel more mature, like I feel more comfortable in this in this place. Now, it, it, being at Fight Week feels more like, like I'm at home. Yeah. Rose, at this point, uh, does she present a more difficult, I mean, as I said, you've evolved, she's evolved as well, right? But do you see her as a more dangerous opponent at this point, or do you still see, like, the, the styles match up very similarly? I think stylistically, we're still similar to what we were back in the in the day, but um, I think that we both evolved a lot. Uh, I think when we originally fought, she was a lot greener to the sport, and now she's been in so many high-level fights, so many title fights. I think that um, she has a lot more composure now, and you know, in, in those spaces, and is a little bit more comfortable on that big stage. So I think that's going to definitely play a, a big factor. And you know, she was dangerous back then, and she's dangerous now. Last thing for me, I guess, what would this mean to you? Obviously, being a USC champion is the goal, right? But does it answer critics, or is it about completing a journey? I mean, what does what does this title mean for you? This title would mean pretty much, I mean, everything to me. It would be just the accumulation of all this hard work, all these years, and for me, it would really make a statement. You know, not just as a fighter or as a person, but it would just, it would show like, hey, you can, you can lose, you can stumble along the way, but you can fight your way back if you put the work in and you evolve in the sport. Carla, you, you two essentially kicked off this division back in the day in 2014, which is a little weird to think about, but I mean, eight years later now, as you sit here, when you look around at what this division has become, what does it feel like for you? I feel so proud to look at how far this division has come in all these years that, you know, since we pretty much started it here at the UFC, um, you know, it's just, there's constantly like a new influx of these like young fighters and it's really blown up. You know, I would say like proudly that the UFC, the, the strawweight uh, division in the UFC is probably one of the bigger, more um, divisions with more attention on it. and. You know, there's so much competition, especially um, before they had the 125 division, like everyone was coming down. So, um, you know, I just feel like we've seen this division come a long way and I'm just proud to be, a, you know, to have kind of started it essentially and to still be a part of it at the top of it today. Yeah, I mean, there were, it's the longevity aspect of it because there was a stretch where, you know, after your championship reign, it seemed like, you know, struggled a little bit in like three and three and four over seven. And it almost felt as if the MMA community sort of started to write you off a tiny bit. And I wonder for you, during that stretch, did, was it, there are questions in your mind, like of whether you would ever get back to a point like this? 
there's there's always like new tough fighters. So I mean, there's always a question of whether you can you know get back to a place like this after after having losses. But you know, and in a, uh, I just got the statistic that. Um, the, the longest time that anyone's ever gotten a title back is, I think, like four years or something along those lines. So, I mean, this hasn't been done, you know? So, for me, it, it would just, I don't know, it would just mean a lot. It'd be like a, a big statement. I mean, is that something that you're particularly proud of? The fact that, you know, eight years later, you are still here. You are still in this discussion. You're still one of the best in the world in this division, whereas Rose was, like, very young when, when that first fight happened. Yeah, most definitely. And even even before I came to the UFC, I mean, I came in as the Invicta champ. So I feel like I've been at this top of the game for a really long time and fighting the best of the best. And it's it's been cool to kind of like see the level of competition grow and grow. And um, yeah, just honestly going back and watching mine and Rose fight and kind of seeing where we were back then and where we are now is just like, whoa, it's really come a long way. Yeah, I mean, when you were talking about her evolution a little bit. I mean, when you look at her today in 2022, why is this a good matchup for you still? I think it's a good matchup for me. Um, I mean, the same reason it was back then. I mean, obviously, it's an MMA fight. Anyone can, can win at any time. It's, it's a dangerous sport. But at the same time, I mean, it's still you still have your wrestler versus striker type of matchup. Um, I, I think that my wrestling is still a step above hers. You know, I have had a lot of experience in it. but. Um, yeah, I just I feel it's kind of like the same the same matchup, but you know we're just we were blue belts back then in MMA, and now we're like black belts, so should be should be exciting. I'm excited to go in there. Absolutely, I think we're all excited for it. Last one for me. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, the, the fight that's headlining the card, I think, is one of the most anticipated fights of the year for for most people. Uh, Gaethje and Oliveira. I'm just curious for your thoughts on that fight, your excitement for it, and how you think it'll play out. Man, these guys are just such high-level fighters. You know, it's it's been it's been fun watching their careers and their styles. And you know, what's what's funny is Oliver actually headlined the first time that Rose and I fought uh, that many years ago. So I'm kind of like, oh, that's cool. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's been cool watching him actually grow like through these years and seeing him come up in his division. And I think he kind of had a similar like long road to the title. But you know, like he's here and it's excited to. I'm excited that. I think it's a, it's a good matchup. I think it's going to be a really fun fight. When you see a guy like Charles, does that give you motivation of like, you know, the long road, like you said? It, it does give me motivation. It's just like, hey man, like we're here, veterans, we're all still here. Like, it, it's cool. It's definitely cool to watch any veteran, like, you know, kind of just still be there like years later. Hi, Carla, to your left over here. Uh, one of the greatest fights in UFC history is being uh, ran back and at UFC 275, uh, what's your prediction for how uh, the fight between Yuana and John Boy Lee uh, goes? You know, that's that's that was such an amazing fight the first time. You know, it was I would say mostly contended on the feet. So um, I think a lot of people are going to be expecting that again. But I wouldn't be surprised if Wei Lee like went for her takedowns like she did against Rose and tried to kind of switch up her game plan a little bit. Um, you know, I think that would be like a little unexpected, but um, yeah, I think it'll be. I think it'll be another barn burner. I think it'll be fun to watch and um, definitely a super high level fight. Do you think that's a number one contender fight, or do you think the winner of this one will face uh, Marina Rodriguez? I think that's really up to the UFC. You know, it depends like um, how that fight goes. You know, just as in my last fight, like I made a statement, and I think um, if. You know, if one of them makes a statement in that fight, it definitely could put them in contention for the, the next title fight. And would winning the UFC title now mean more to you than winning it back in 2014 off the, the Ultimate Fighter Tournament? It would be really hard to say because, you know, going through that whole Ultimate Fighter experience and even before that, you know, fighting for, you know, years and not expecting women to even be in the UFC was such a historical moment. It was like a moment that I had never expected. It was super emotional, but now after all these years and um, kind of, you know, having, you know, losses going in and out and just working so hard to get back here and, and the UFC is in such a different place, like, you know, it would be really hard to compare it, but I, I hope I can let you know on Saturday. <laughs> the back left, back here. 
Uh, Carlo, we've seen you win the Invicta title, the UFC title, be the inaugural champion. Does it feel different being the challenger this time? Well, it's kind of interesting because when I fought for the Invicta title, I mean, it, it was, we were both challenged, you know, we were both fighting. I wasn't the champion, like, defending, and same thing with the, uh, with the UFC belt when I first won that. So, to me, it, it just feels like it's another fight with a lot on the line. <laughs>